Hey guys, it's Josh with Dead Big Channel, and today we're going to be working on a C18, and possibly for the next several days, possibly for the next several weeks. So what we've got is the C18 in, this is a haul truck, you can tell because it's kind of sitting in the middle, I'm 500 feet off the floor, and it's got some oil leaks. They think it's the front structure, it looks like the head gasket might also be wet, uh, so basically they said, hey, figure out where the oil leaks are, and then we're gonna go from there. So we're gonna put some oil dye in it, and then see where the leaks are. The front structure is definitely wet, the head gasket area is definitely wet. I've seen them where the front structures are leaking, or what they think's leaking, and I've seen them where the head gasket's leaking, and then running down the front structure. Obviously, I've seen these engine blocks where the head gasket's leaking also. That was a very common problem on them, and still is to this day. So here we have our C18, nice sunny day here, probably one of the last ones, see? C18, ready to go. So what we're gonna be doing here, like I said, is put oil dye in. I did this in a couple videos ago in a different machine with a C7 with an oil leak. And this one, since it takes a little bit more oil than a C7, we're putting five of the vials in. This is the Oil Glow 22, which you can get from most cat dealers. You can get it from a variety of places. Of course, there's other brands also. And then what we're gonna do is run it and see where the heck the oil leak is. And I'm gonna show you where the oil leak is right now, at least where it's wet. That's not telling us exactly where it's coming from though. That's why I'm putting the dye in. Because oil, of course, can travel and is affected by gravity and pressure. So you don't wanna just assume that one spot that's wet is where the leak's coming from. So you can see the head gasket seam is wet and the front structure seam is wet also. This is the head gasket obviously what we're looking at. Pretty wet. These engines sit pretty level, unlike most truck engines, which lean back. So we know we have an oil leak. We need to determine where the heck it's from. So we need to clean it off thoroughly with some brake clean. And we're just letting it run here. We'll let it. And what we're going to be using is the UV Beast Ultraviolet Light. Get this one, folks, if you're going to get a uh, cordless. Ultraviolet light, they're not sponsoring the channel. I bought this and I love that black light. It's way better than any of the other little tiny pencil style ones. Those are almost useless. And we're just looking for a very bright yellow or green fluorescent color coming out from either the side here or the head gasket area. If you're running about 10 minutes and don't see one at this time. So we've been running it now for several minutes, about 10 minutes actually, and no leaks yet. Now we had washed it off with brake clean Engine's about 150 degree coolant temperature. I really don't want to just wing it though. I mean, obviously you don't want to say, oh, it's the head, oh, it's the front structure without knowing what's leaking. And we're gonna keep looking. Last thing, I'd rather go spend more time on it now than make a mistake and diagnose it wrong. So what I'm doing is I'm just letting it run longer, varying RPMs, and once I can't find the leak, then we'll show you for sure. But as of yet, still haven't found the leak. So I've been running here for about an hour and still no leaks. Didn't see anything. Everything was dry still. There were several other segments that needed fixed on this, but they were all fenders and guards, stuff like that, nothing engine related. So I got on those and it took a couple days of work and then I washed the machine off and this is a couple days later here. And it's kind of hard to tell, but it was really raining here. It was raining all morning, but it's hard with a camera and the ultraviolet, but it was a lot easier to see if you're in person. Do you see the greenish mark right there? That is definitely where the oil leak's coming from for the front structure. But if you look back, there's a completely disconnected, separate oil mark right there, which means, of course, the cylinder head gasket and the front structure are leaking. So yeah, they're both leaking from different places. That's why I really wanted to do the dye test because we could have replaced one or the other and still had an oil leak. So we've got the haul truck. I'm gonna call it a haul truck because I consider trucks different than haul trucks. And you can see this sucker's way up off the ground. The engine, of course, right there, we're gonna be pulling all these intake tubes, the air filter, 
I'm gonna try and leave that cooling package in the front there. It's actually not the radiator. The radiator is behind the cab, believe it or not. And they want to pull the head first just to make sure it doesn't need cylinder packs or counter bores cut. Got our air filter off. We got our intake tube off. We need to remove the other one. And we've been, you know, contamination control to cats always big, but they've been having us use this saran wrap type stuff on the tubes. Ah. Eh. I think I'm a bigger fan of the caps, but sometimes caps get left and stuff. I'm not saying that can't, you know, but what do we got here? An arachnid. Now, most, well, I don't know about most people. A lot of people do not like spiders. At least everyone else in my household doesn't, but I don't mind spiders. Obviously, I don't want them crawling on me at night, but I don't really mind them that much. I think they play an important part. I was trying to remove this tube, and I saw the little guy here. And I didn't want to hurt him. Just wanted to move off the tube so I can remove the tube, sir. And here we are. So some things are easier on equipment. Some things are harder on equipment. Anyone that's worked on both knows that in relation to trucks, at least. Take this filter housing, for instance. The trucks don't have a filter housing like this. They have a very simple, small, single fuel filter housing. It's lower on the engine. However, these have fuel pressure sensors. I wish the trucks had a fuel pressure sensor instead of always having to use a gauge, but these do. So I guess it just depends what you're doing makes it easier or harder. So what I'm doing here is I always do this with connectors. Just put a single stripe somewhere on them. It really helps if you've got multiple connectors next to each other to help line them up. Some guys use different ways, but that's how I usually do it. So we're going to be taking that fuel filter housing off here. And we got our, I'm going to call these my spare wrenches. You might notice this is a Craftsman wrench. And usually it's like, hey, everything's snap-on. I mean, all my wrenches are snap-on generally that I use. But they're in that box over there. I usually work out of this blue tool bag whenever I'm working on equipment like this where it's not easy to get to and from uh, my toolbox very easily. Or if I'm working on a motorhome out in the yard, I'll do the same thing. Hopefully the fitting doesn't spin. And, of course, it did. Everyone knows that feeling where it's like, please just spin the line, not the fitting. But of course, yeah. Now I got to go down to my toolbox and get my other wrench to loosen up. Hopefully I don't destroy myself on the way. This week's Destruction of the Week comes from, well, I'm not sure their name. Their email said Becky as the name, but I'm not sure. Anyway, this is a Mac, and as you can see... It's a see-through Mac. It, yeah, threw a rod, ripped all the coolant lines off. Pretty broken there. That's uh, some gnarly pictures. Glad it's not my engine. Check this out. Now, folks, we're in a Stevens, what? We're in a Stewart and Stevenson's fire truck. And here's something most people have probably never seen. At least I've never seen it before. Raining like the Dickens. Watch this. Boom! Three wiper blades, pretty cool. This is an interesting rig. Yeah, that was an interesting vehicle there. It would have been a good video if we'd found anything wrong. It came in for, and it had a Cat 3126 in it. Apparently it was running rough, but it only did it once for the customer. We got it, it ran fine. There were no check engine lights. We ran it several times. Don't know, it had very low mileage on it also. So maybe we'll see that one back one day, but using our two wrenches now and yeah just getting this filter housing off i'm not obviously i'm not going to film taking every line off taking every bracket and bolt and connector off i just kind of do it in little stints here so taking our line off here then we're going to use a cap out of our peanut butter powder container here my jac of course of course it's the wrong size uh let's try a different size let's try a size that fits and I like JIC fittings. They're great. Uh, they're easy to cap. You can cap it here. The, I'm not going to take the fuel filters off. I'm going to take the whole housing off. So capping it allows me to not even drain the filters. And you don't even have to crazy tighten them down. So obviously here we've gotten pretty much everything off of the outside of the head that we need to take off. Pretty much everything. And what we're doing is, of course, taking the valve covers off because we have to pull the overhead off, meaning the rocker arms, the Jake housings. I'm not sure if this one has IVAs or not. We'll know here once we get the valve covers off, pull the injectors out. Then we can do the cam gear, head bolts, and get the head off. And like I said earlier, they wanted to pull the head before the front structure just to make sure it didn't need liners or if it didn't have uh, in need of counter bores. So 
That's why we're doing the head first. Then we get on to the front structure, which we'll also be removing in this video. So valve covers off, it's always good to see the condition of the overhead, not like checking the settings, but as far as, is there a lot of oil coolant mixed? Is there a ton of rust? Is there anything weird? This one has rust on it. I've Most of the haul trucks I've seen the overheads on do have rust on them for some reason. Not a lot on this one though. Look at that connector, you know what that's for? It's actually the coolant temp sensor. Instead of like on the trucks where they run it outside, on these haul truck engines, they run the wiring for the sensor through the valve cover base, and then it comes back out and goes to the thermostat housing. Pretty interesting. This one does not have IVAs, by the way, just Jake's. So we're getting ready to pull the Jake housings off here. And you ever notice that they're studs except for one bolt? You ever wonder why that is? Look at the bolt. You see how it's, it's downsized there in the section, in the middle section? Oil flows through that to the Jake housing and the rocker arm, so that's why it's like that. Interesting, huh? So we've got our injectors out, obviously. Pull the rocker arms. And you've seen me pull injectors a billion times. This one's weird. Look at this. There is the cup seal, the injector sleeve seal. It is swollen and sticking out above the cup. And that's not the only one like this. Actually, five out of the six or four out of the six are like that. And that's really weird. There's no sign of fuel in the coolant. Not sure if that's just the upper seal and the, the lower seal is still fine, but definitely a problem. We're going to need to do cups on the cylinder head before reinstalling it. So we need to get our peanut cover off. And if you never don't know why it's called a peanut cover, it's because it looks like a peanut if you ever look at it. And kind of, you know, kind of that like figure eight shape. And we've got our, this is actually the oil filter housing. It's remote mounted and it runs in front of the peanut cover. Look at all the mess. I need to put these tools away. It's hard to... Hard to keep track here, folks. Uh, you'll, you'll get some tools up there and you're needing some of them, don't need some of them. I, I should work on being a little more organized, putting them away more than I do, but you know, always room for improvement. So we're getting our bolts out here, cam gear, 5 8 headed bolts, and I'm gonna show you guys a trick. So if you take uh, most of the bolts, at least on the top side of the cam, if it's pinned, and this is, I don't wanna call it pinned, it's timed, so the cam gear is at top dead center, according to the mark on the front structure there. If you take the upper four bolts out, use this. And this is actually a bolt for IVA housing studs that I've got. You'll get a bunch in the rebuild kits and they don't always match the engine you're working on. So I cut the studded end off. You could use a bolt also, just a 3 8 bolt. And what I like to do is thread that in, take the last two, or if you just want to leave one bolt in, you do need to take at least the upper two bolts out though to thread that one in. And once that's in, it's gonna let you really hold this cam gear much easier. It's really good for installation also because cam gear is hard to hold and align properly if you're just trying to hold the cam gear by itself. It's quite heavy, not really anything to grab onto. So if you put that, I don't know what you'd call it, handle on there, it allows you to get a really good grip on the cam gear, less likelihood you're gonna break it or drop it. And there you go. It's a lot easier on truck too because usually the cam gear is much higher. This one's much lower in relation to your body because obviously this is a haul truck. You're basically standing on top of the engine almost. So you can see we got the head off here. Everything looks good. Liners look good. The head gasket looked good. We did do liner protrusion. Liner protrusion was within specification. And this has never had counter bores cut before. So head gasket's off. Uh, check the head, no cracks or anything. So I think we just need to reseal it. You can see I've removed the oil filter housing and it's in that part has been way over there. And now we need to start working on getting our front structure off, which means pulling the damper off. Or in this case, both dampers. These are both huge too. I don't know why this engine has not only two dampers, but they're twice as big as the truck ones. I... I don't know. It's some about vibration or something on this guy. But the good news is, remember what I said, it's some things are easier, some things are harder. The the belt drives on this are very simple. There's just an alternator, one idler, one tensioner, and the AC compressor. And they're all kind of tucked away in the lower left part of the engine there. So getting the belt off is actually pretty easy. Getting the alternator off is pretty easy. Batteries are disconnected. I'm tr what I'm going to do or try to do is not pull the AC compressor. I just have to unbolt it from 
the bracket. Now the AC compressor bolts are almost impossible to get to from under or from where I'm at, which is to the left side of the engine. I'm trying to get my big ratchet off to get the belt off here. It got stuck. Got it. But if you pull the belly pan down, which we had to do to get the oil pan off, you can get the AC compressor bolts way, way easier. So these are the bolts. There's about 5 million of them that hold the damper assembly in. So it's kind of a sandwich with the pulley. There's a damper pulley sandwich or damper pulley damper sandwich. And the outer one here, all the bolts hold them all together. And then you have your drive unit, which has separate bolts that you have to pull all these off of first. And this thing is heavy. It says it weighs about 100 pounds, and I totally believe that. I used the crane to get it out of there, but once we got the bolts out, I put some cardboard under it just so it wouldn't damage, hopefully, anything. And yeah, came right off. Now, notice the accessory drive is behind the forward damper, so you can't pull that accessory drive bracket off until you've pulled both dampers off. Okay, so that's off. We can get that out with a crane, and then the pulley came right off. But this guy, the inner one, that one, uh, yeah, it didn't want to come off. No bolts are holding on. It's literally just sitting on the, I'm not sure even what you'd call it. It's just a sleeve that it sits on. And I should have sprayed it down with penetrating oil. I'm going to do that here in a little bit, but should have did that before. Just, just hard. Come on, come on. Come on, do it. Yeah, do, do it. it, come on. But going to take a little more, uh, a little more persuasion. So I should have sprayed penetrating oil on that, uh, the sleeve portion before. Oh man, I hate that you run out of penetrating oil. Now I gotta go down and get the penetrating oil, other penetrating oil. Yeah, so I was working it back and forth here. It'd be easier if I could stand, I, I, in, I don't know, maybe in front of the engine. You might be saying, well, pull that cooling package, Josh. It'd be way easier. Yes, yes and no. And uh, yeah, we followed this for a while. Four quadrillion years later. Okay. Yeah, this is a while. I got some different pry bars so I could pry both sides equally. And there we go. Finally got that sucker off. I literally Wait fought with that thing for like 10 minutes or something. But we got her in the end. So those are off. Going to use the crane to get it out of there. Now I pulled the oil pan obviously here. And what we're using here is this composite 4x4 and these pretty cool air jacks here that you can run a pin through. And they're both in a jack and a jack stand. So we've got the front motor mounts off, obviously. That's why you needed that block with the jack to hold the engine up, because obviously your front motor mounts are going through the front structure. So we've got a bunch of bolts. Some are bolts with, well, not bolts with nuts, but some are studs. They're these pass-through style studs that actually have like a... In, integro washer or seal washer on them you know, we've got some of these this would be if it had an air compressor we need to take that adapter off because that stud goes through the front structure there uh, there's the two nuts for the studs there i'm gonna be using old faithful here our 3 8 matco impact wrench i've had this since 2009 february 2009 i always write the date on my air and electric tool just to see how long they last how long ago i got them and this i believe is my Oldest owned air tool. Oh, well, that's that might not be true. I have a die grinder, a cat straight die grinder that's uh, possibly older. I may, I may have not even written the date on the die grinder. I have to check that one. But I've never even had this thing rebuilt. I've had a long time. And yeah, I do use the Milwaukee electric cordless ones a lot more now. But on a bigger job like this, where we're going to be pulling lots of bolts, especially oil coated things, I tend to use the air. It's easier to clean. Uh, you know, you don't have batteries and stuff to worry about, so the air's already there also. So we're getting our bolts out here. Now these bolts had so much paint on them. Everyone has had this problem. We have so much paint on the bolt that you can't even get your worn out 916 socket on it. Pain in the butt. And these are the water pump bolts. So the water pump bolts actually seal the front structure, at least part of it, because they sandwich what they call the backing plate to the front structure through the water pump. Everyone knows this, where you get the bolt loose, and then it runs the gun back, but you can't get the bolt all the way out because there's a guard in the way. And you might be saying, well, you should have pulled that cooling package. Yeah, I know. Well, actually, no. I probably wouldn't have pulled it even uh, doing this job again. You have to evac the AC in that situation. Then you got to pull the whole cooling package out. 
Uh, you're gonna have to, it's got hydraulic oil going to it, so you're gonna have to cap those lines. There's a couple different coolers, like a fuel cooler, I believe, also, so it's okay. Now look at this! A bolt with a nut! Come on! Who thought a bolt with a nut was a good idea? There's only one, too, what the heck? Like, do a weld nut or something. Yeah, there's there's gotta be a better way. Make me make use of those those pass-through style nuts that are serrated or something. I that's the only one on the engine too, with a bolt with a nut for like the front structure area. So what we're doing here, we're just trying to separate the front structure from the backing plate. Now the the front main, you're probably saying the front main's on. Now some of these, depending on which style front main you have, you can pull off with the front main on. And this one. I didn't want to try and pull the front main because it's so hard to get to here, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull this off without at least pulling the outer section of the front main off because the lips are probably hitting. So, going to have to do that. So, yeah, I had to do that. So, that only took about 10 minutes. was able to peel that wear sleeve guy adapter thing off there. You can see it's a lot looser now. Should be able to pull it off. It's loose on the dowel, so let's go. So here's something. We have the outer part of the front main still in the front structure. If you ever pull a front structure, this is the best way to get it out. Just put it against the lip of the front main, hit it with your air hammer, comes right out. Piece of cake. Fortis would love that air hammer usage. So here we go. So I've already pulled the idler uh, gear for the camshaft. This is the one with the shaft that moves to adjust your cam backlash. Gonna try and not. I'm gonna try and put it back in the same position it was before uh, when I go to re reinstall that guy. And this is now. This is weird. I had timed this engine before, but if you notice, the mark there does not line up with the crank mark. It's like when the factory assembled it, they went 180 degrees off on this. Some people call it a cluster gear. Some people call it a bowl gear. I believe the technical term from CAD is a cluster gear. But I'm gonna it's in yeah assemble it with the cluster gear as it says to which is with the lines marked up not how it is now so the cluster gear off there we and you actually don't have to pull the stub shaft that the cluster gear sits on we can take these bolts out now these are supposedly some fancy locking bolt that you're not supposed to reuse so i had ordered some new ones but i really don't see what's different about them they look the same to me uh, as far as like a, just a normal 3 8 bolt that's about one inch long. Uh, the washers are kind of bigger, and they use a ton of blue Loctite on them, but they're not a, I don't see why they're a locking, quote-unquote, locking bolt. There's eight of them. There's three on one side, five on the other. And what's surprising, they're not even a torque procedure uh, in the installation guidelines for this. It just says install bolts and torque to 40 foot-pounds, which I'll definitely be torquing them and using blue Loctite, but... I, would, I wouldn't mind having a torque procedure when putting it back together. It is important. And that's the seal that was leaking is the one between the uh, block here and the backing plate. So kind of tell this is an older engine design, the uh, C18 here, which is based on the 3406. And the 3406 actually came out 50 years ago, or I should say it was designed 50 years ago. It was designed in 1973. If you were born in 1973, you're probably thinking, was that really 50 years? Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was 50 years ago. Yep, yep, yep. So, yeah, it's kind of a carryover with the backing plate here. Kind of like the spacer plate for the engine head, or the cylinder head. So we've got it off here. You can see I've cleaned it already, and we're going to be scraping it off. Now, a lot of guys would take a buffer wheel to this thing. Just send that debris everywhere. I'm more of a scraper fan myself. You might be saying, well, like, yeah, that takes longer. Yes, it makes less of a mess, though. And really the only hard part is down here where the motor mount bolts were. That section tends to be, the gasket just seems to be a lot harder to get off. But for most of it, it's pretty, comes off pretty easy in big chunks. Just down here is kind of a pain in the butt. Um, in general, I don't mind spending a little extra time scraping it off instead of damaging the finish and then sending that debris all over the place. You know, if you did buzz wheel, you're going to then have to put it back in the parts washer to get all that debris off. Not only that, that's going to go all over the place, which I don't want to. I want to scrape it off in the biggest chunks as possible without damaging the underlying material that is underneath. And that takes a little bit of elbow grease. 
I bought an air scraper at one time. Uh, I think it was an Astro Pneumatic air scraper, but to tell you the truth, it was kind of aggressive and it would actually dig into the bottoms. Uh, whatever you were trying to scrape off, it would damage them. Now these are the pass-through studs I was talking about. Those three do not have seals. These ones do. You see the little dot there. I've actually taken these out, resealed them, and pounded the uh, new seals in. It's a seal washer. It's kind of like an AC system seal where it's a washer with an embedded piece of rubber in it. There they are. They came with a kit. Kind of debated on not doing it because it is kind of a pain to pound them out and pound them back in. But I was like, you know what? I'm already here. I've already spent this much labor time. They're already in the kit. Might as well do it. You know, maybe five years from now, one of them suckers was going to leak. So I might have just saved the uh, future customer quite a bit of money. And you just tap it in. Just tap, tap it in. Using a brass mallet here. You always want to support this guy too. You don't want to bend the structure, but once it's installed, you're ready to go. Thanks for watching the video.